hands of Deborah to forge it for home. I had him here with me down below. I was foolish enough to lend them to a friend. Well, you know what become of those books that you lend. So if anyone has them, just let me know. For I solemnly promise I won't let them go. Pat Kennedy wrote them. He lived on the hill. Overlooking the veil around Condon's fine mill. The spot is seen. Till the right as you go. Up the hill to the gate leading up the gym bows. They will deck with the pastimes in vogue. Not more off he laying and in town below. The old families he mentioned are nearly all gone. The greens of Kula and the Whitney's of Gron. The grounds and the holes are names of the past. And the duns that he spoke of, I'm one of the last. The landlord he mentioned was Michael Crow. He kept at the castle a pack of fine hounds and hunted the country for miles around. Jim Quigley was huntsman with whip, spur and cap. And he rode over his fences and wanted no gap. Lord Carew built that schoolhouse that stands on the brow. And the old one was where Tom Delaney is now. Art O'Neill, the old schoolmaster, blind as a bat. A man of deep learning he was for all that. When you were finished with him, you could go where you pleased. Many made fame for themselves overseas. The law we lived under compelled them to roam. To look for a living denied them at home. The freedom from serving we got by degrees in a measure was due to the talent of these. When Uncle Sam gives an order, it must be obeyed, or else be reminded of debts to be paid. A reckoning is sure to be paid for it all. The lifeblood of Connolly Lake purse on the wall. The name of Kevin Barris can tell its own tale to the sons of the pupils of Arthur O'Neill. The best of good wishes I send to you all. On the day of the birth of the babe in the star, sing praise to God that we still are alive and hope for the best in 2015. <laughs>